Good evening, everybody. Is every, oh, thank you very much. That's my mama bear corner over there. I forgot to wear pink and they ran and got me some pink. So thank you so much, my mama bears. Thank you very much. Let's give every parent in this room a round of applause. Every year at this conference, I am always touched by the stories shared by our brave youth ambassadors and young LGBTQ movement leaders. They're here not only owning their truth, but fighting for the rights of other young people in our society to do the same. I take comfort knowing that after this weekend is over, they're returning to their communities, telling others around them, I am amazing just the way I am, and so are you. And in And in doing so, in boldly and proudly proclaiming who they are, they are offering their peers powerful role models. Growing up as a young trans girl, the only portrayals of transgender people I ever saw were either demeaning punchlines in a comedy, or worse, a dead body in a crime show. In the absence of relatable role models, in our communities, in our politics, and on our screens, so many LGBTQ people come of age feeling totally alone. Being told who we are isn't valid, and wondering whether the heart of this country is big enough to love us too. Last year, our next Upstander Award recipient made national headlines when she came out as transgender. Even at the age of 17, Josie Toda had already been a familiar face for millions of television viewers who recognized her as a proud, queer, young actor. She knew that her coming out as transgender would not go unnoticed, and instead made it an opportunity to tell the world her story and con contribute to our society's ongoing evolution when it comes to understanding and accepting transgender youth. Visibility matters. More and more, we are seeing actors boldly sharing themselves with viewers and fans in ways that aren't just life-affirming, but also life-saving. That's why HRC honored Josie last year, even before she came out publicly as transgender, and why we honor her again tonight. Stories like Josie's tell our young people that who they are is okay, okay, that they are deserving of respect, and that no matter what they face, there are others out there who support them and who love them. But coming out publicly on a national scale is never easy. And yet, based on my experiences first meeting Josie last year at an anti-bullying panel, I'm not at all surprised that she took the opportunity to speak out. Josie is incredibly compassionate. She's thoughtful and kind and funny. She knows the positive impact her story can have on the stories of thousands of trans kids across this country. And equally inspiring, she's backed by an incredible family who are here tonight who clearly love Josie to the moon and back. At her young age, Josie has already done so much to improve the lives of transgender youth, and I know that she is just getting started. Let's take a look at some of her work. Thank you all for this incredible honor. I'm so proud to be among such amazing human beings tonight. I stand here today looking slightly different than the last time I was at an HRC event. The last time I was asked to speak, I felt one, extremely honored, but also afraid. I wasn't myself yet. I was in hiding. I felt wrong standing up and giving a speech about being yourself when I couldn't even do it. I prayed so hard they would just email me back and say, never mind. I would ask myself, why would they want me to speak to kids hiding when I was right back there with them? But nevertheless, I took one of the most wonderful opportunities I have received and said yes. Speaking at HRC in Utah, I was met with the most incredible support by everyone around me, some of which are in this room today, and are a part of the reason I felt comfortable enough to be myself. Tonight, standing here as myself, I'm proud to honor the incredible teachers and educators that promote the well-being and safety of LGBTQ plus students. Looking back at my elementary school experience, I see a dark time, a time where I wasn't allowed to be myself. I remember distinctly praying that I would get sick at school or even make myself sick so I could go home where I could leave all my anxiety. 
That way, I wouldn't have to face the fact that no one would want to sit with me or let me play with them on the playground. One of the lowest points was probably in the fifth grade. I remember being out of school for a family member's wedding and my mother getting a call from my principal. Seeing the look on my mother's face, I knew something was up. She had been immune to calls like this. For a while, I would act out behaviorally. My mom would get calls every other week with something I did or something someone did to me. But this time, her face was different. She was furious, but not mad at me. When my mother put down the phone, she told me that my teacher held a class meeting and took a vote whether they wanted me at their school. According to my principal, it was unanimous, and I was asked to leave because I didn't fit in. I felt unwanted and unloved. I can't describe the feeling of knowing that all your peers disliked you and wanted you gone. It left an effect on my insecurity and self-worth that I'm still battling today. However, that's not the extent of my schooling experience. Moving to Los Angeles, I met the most incredibly loving teachers that never made me feel unwelcome or unaccepted. I went to Providence High School, ironically, a Catholic school. We had to pray every morning, several hour long message, which I sometimes skipped. Forgive me, God. <laughs> but God and his love for everyone was instilled in us. We were never taught being gay was a sin or being trans was a disgrace. We were all truly loved and accepted. From our religious to our US government classes, we were constantly talking about current events and hate crimes amongst the LGBTQ community. Now my greatest experience was joining our mock trial team junior year. I was of course the captain. Well, they never said I was the captain, but everyone knew I was in charge. <laughs> it's true. I remember wanting to wear a bright pink power suit to our first game. I was a little hesitant, but I knew I wasn't gonna let anyone stop me. Showing up to court that day, I walked like I always do, strutting. And I can specifically recall hearing the voice of the campus minister of my school, Mr. Estrada, saying, you better work. <laughs> and I cannot tell you how much that made my heart full with joy. Coming back to that school after letting the world know I was transgender was a whirlwind. I had signed up to assist my mock trial coach my last week before I graduated. So when it came down to the following school year, I knew I had to make a decision. To keep that promise and go back, or not. I was afraid initially. I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to make things awkward with my former classmates. I knew they all loved me, but I would be doing what I feared my entire life, being myself at school. After many weeks of fighting it, and dueling in my head back and forth, I made a decision. I walked right into room 403 to all of my teammates cheering for me. I was immediately met with so much unconditional love and support. I remember our mock trial coach, Mr. Bullock, who's here tonight, telling me how proud he was of me and that he has my back. In that room, I saw hope. When I saw the love and support during my first semester of college, I saw hope. Last week, I became the first transgender person to join a sorority at my university. Thank you. In a room with all those women giving me love and making me feel wanted, I saw so much hope. Hope for everyone who's hiding that they can be met with that much love too. Or it goes to show that you can find love anywhere as an LGBTQIA person. A Catholic school, a sorority. While the struggle for equality and civil rights continues, and there are people around you ready to take you down, there are people waiting to love you and to support you. They're out there. I can attest to that. We are lovable. We are capable of being loved and giving it right back. Thank you.